Hi, this is Hongshu from MotionCircles.com. Today I'll be teaching you how to achieve this animation in After Effects. I've attached the working file in the description. Feel free to download it and follow along. Without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, let's start animating this logo here. I have this copy layer here in the timeline and then the typeface we're using is called Poppins Bold. Now we just need to separate each letter into its own layer, which I already have it here. You can see all these different layers. If I turn them on and then turn off the last layer, these are the separated letters. Each letter is on its own layer. Now first I just need to use this O as in trigger to animate everything in. But before I do that, I want to have the anchor point at the center of these letters. I'm holding down command key on the keyboard and then double click on this pen behind. Now we have all the anchor point in the center of the layer. First, I want to use this O as a trigger to trigger all these different characters to jump out from this position of the O. So let's put P on the keyboard. Let's animate the position property of this O. Now that I know the this is the final position of the O, so I'll move forward 12 frames, command shift right arrow for 10 frames, and then command right arrow for two frames. I'll set a position key on here. This is going to be the final position of my O. If I solo this layer here, I only have the O to deal with. I can move this one to the right, and then I'm thinking to drag this handle here so that we have a curved line. I want this O to come in from the bottom and then shoot up, drop into the scene. So this is gonna be the motion path of my O here. However, at the end over here, I wanna do a bounce animation or a overshoot. So over here, I want to make sure I give it enough room, move this last keyframe over forward two frames and then drag this one down, select all, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then let's go to the graph editor, make sure it's the speed graph. Let's give the curve some modification like this. And then let's see what our animation look like. I think that works for me. This is a speed graph, meaning you can see here when my circle is on the highest point, the speed over here is at zero. So basically when it comes in, there's a lot of speed coming in. And then when it goes to the top, it lost a lot of the energy. And then when it goes down again, it's gathering more momentum and there's going to be a bounce at the end before it settles. That's what the animation curve is telling me. And then when the O bounces over here, I want it to trigger the other O Let's solo this layer as well here. Hit P on the position property. I wanna make sure I know the final position of my layer. Hit on the stopwatch for the keyframe, and this is gonna be the final position. However, I want this animation to take maybe 10 frames. Move the keyframe over here at 10th frames, and then go back. I'll drop this one to the same position as the first O. So I want it to trigger the second animation. And then in the middle of the two keyframes, I want to drop this up and move the handle a little bit. So we have a jumping animation as if this first O is triggering the second to jump up and then fall onto its own position. And over here, I also want to do a overshoot. So I'll drag this one over a little bit to this position. I think this animation might be too slow. Let's see what it looks like. Select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then let's go to the graph editor, hit this one, hit fit graph to view, and then go to edit speed graph. Let's use a similar curve to what we have in the first animation. I think it works. So this O is triggered out the second O, jumps up like that. And then I also want to do the same thing for the M. Let's solo this layer as well. P on the keyboard, I want to know the final position of the M. Just hit the stopwatch to know the final position. 
to enter the final position and then go back to the timeline, drag this M over to overlap with these O here, and then go to maybe around the center of the two keyframes, drag it up a little bit, and then drag these handles to make sure we have a smooth curve like this. And then let's do a overshoot over here. Just drag this one down so it goes over to the final position and then it will come back after it lands. That's good. Select four keyframes, go to right click keyframe assistant at the end of the menu, easy ease. And then let's go to this icon graph editor. Let's make sure we have a lot of energy coming in. And then over here, when it's at the highest point, it's gonna lost all of the energy. And then we're gonna do a little bounce at the end. Let's see the animation. That looks good. I just need to stagger these. Maybe the M can come in first and then the O come in after so that they're not coming in at the same time. That looks good. For the J, let's move this layer back. Hit P on the keyboard. Make sure we know the final position here and then go over to the front. We want the J to also come in from the first position of the O and then go in the middle here between the two keyframes. I want to drag this keyframe out and then make sure we have a smooth curve. And this time I just want the curve to be higher so that it's not overlapping with the O too much. So if I have the J like this, let me see what our other letters is gonna look like. So I want to arrange the path of the motion so that they're not overlapping too much. So now I just wanna maybe turn them all, all at once and then hit P on the keyboard make sure I anchor the position property for all the letters. And then from the start, I want them all to come in from the same position, which is over here, overlapping with the first O. And then let's see how we can arrange the path for the other letters. So go into the middle of all those two keyframes for the U. If I drag it up like this, this is gonna be the path property of the U. And then if we have the I here, I can do the I even higher. And then the C here, like this. And then the E here. So the E I think can go maybe two bounces. I don't want them to all fall at the same time with one motion. So some of the letters, I want to have some interaction between the two letters. So I'm thinking how I can maybe manipulate the path so they interact with each other. So I think the I can bounce on the J, so it's gonna be, let's go to the I. The I can be bouncing maybe over here. So come down. If the I wanna bounce on the J over here at this point, I think the J should already be settled in position. So I need to J, I need the J to come down very fast like this. If the J come down pretty fast like that, and then over this, at this point here, I want the I to maybe bounce on the J a little bit. And then over here in the center, the I would be bounced one more time after hitting the J to bounce up one more time and then settles in the final position. So that'll be the curve for the I. If I wanna drag this curve here, I need to hold down option on the keyboard and then drag the handle to break the handle. So we have a sharper angle for this bounce here. And for the end, I also want the eye to overshoot. So I need to drag the eye over a little bit. So in this case, I think the J should be coming down. So lowered it down a little bit so it doesn't go that far and that high. And then we have the J like this coming down and then the I is gonna bounce on the J. And then the U is gonna be just going a bit higher. Bounce one more time, just bounce one time. And at the final position, I'll have it overshoot like all the other letters, have it overshoot. I select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. And then let's select all the keyframe on the I this is gonna be the speed graph. 
and then we need to make sure it comes in with some energy and then this is the first high point I needed to lose all the energy and over here there's a bounce like this that gains some energy and over here at this point it's the second highest point I needed to go flatter so it's gonna go flat which means losing energy and then over here this is just gonna be the last bounce which is the overshoot for the eye so that's gonna be what the curve looks like and then let's adjust the curve of the U let's select the keyframe go to the graph editor for the U we're gonna do the same thing coming in with some speed and energy and then goes flat when it travels to the top and then it's gonna drop down over here it's gonna be one bounce that's good and then we're gonna do the J let's do the J let's go to the graph editor a little bit of energy some flats in the middle because it's losing energy and then we forgot to do the bounce of the J let me just copy the last position keyframe command C and then paste it in here and then drop it down a little let's go to the graph editor okay let's just drag this handle a little bit so that it doesn't have too much energy now let's see what the animation looks like now that's good However, for the eye, I want it to spin a little bit as well. So let's do some rotation. Shift R, pull out the rotation. The final rotation is going to be zero degrees. And then over here, it has to be zero degrees, maybe like negative one, one round. And then over here, let's do negative two, two rounds. So it just spins and then hit and then spins and then Yeah, something like that. I think that works. Turn off the solo button so that we have all the letters visible. So over here, you can see there's a lot of overlapping, which I don't like. So I need the C to come up even maybe higher, like this high, to avoid some overlap. I also need to make sure the I is in position, maybe like around this point here. It's got the full rotation already so that it can just straight dropping straight down. I think we will need the E to come in first. Let's do the E first. Let's just do a little overshoot at the end. Just copy the last keyframe, Command C, and then Command V, paste it here, and then drag it out a little bit. So we got the E like this. Go to Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease. Let's adjust the curves like this. That's good. So we have the E come in first. I think the E needs to fall maybe faster. Let's make these keyframes closer for the E. I need the C to maybe go higher like this. And then for now, I want the C to drop on top of the E like this, hit the E. So the C would hit the E first, and then they will go, it will go the other way. When the I lands, I want the C to hit on the I as well. So over here, I want the C to hit on this I here. That's good. And then after hitting the I, the C would be dropping into position hold down option to manipulate this handle here and then after hitting the e it would go out to hit the i here like this and then i would do another curve here to have the e drop down like this Let's go select all the keyframes, right click keyframe assistant, easy ease, and then make sure we're changing the curves here like this. So that's the curve for the C. We got the I here, we got the U here. 
I think that you should come in faster. So I'll just move the keyframes closer and then hit Shift R. Maybe just do negative one for one round rotation. So that you and I is both rotating. And then if I stagger these animation a little bit, so they're not overlapping with each other. I think it looks fine now. So basically I'm just adjusting the enter point, entry point of these letters so that they're not coming in at the same time. All right, there you go. That's our animation for all these different letters. Let's preview this. After we have this animation, we can just drop in our background. Let's go to the project panel. Let's drop in the background that we already have. And then we can pre-compose these letters into one layer, Command Shift C, call it logo animation. And then let's go to effects and presets. Let's search for fill. We can change the color of this logo animation to a darker gray. And that's gonna be our full animation. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. We will be publishing more videos like this every single week. Please leave me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. We also have a free exclusive community where motion designers hang out and learn from each other. Click the link in the description to join our exclusive community. Hope to see you in the next video.